Can I tell you what's been on my mind? Sick and tired of the nine to five in the city light. Hey, darling, we could get out of town. See the beautiful world around, wanna see it now. Pack our bags and get in that car. Leave a little note and we'll drive real far Let's get out, we can leave this city Let's drive to the open air Yeah, the countryside is so pretty With the wind blowing in your hair We can look back someday Baby, don't you understand He flew. He did it himself Let's go and have a look, Tess. I show Daddy how to do this so that he can. Hey, darling. I love it when it's me and you. On the road with a couple of tunes in a car for two. Hey, darling. You know we're gonna have a really good time. Driving in the middle of the night when the stars are bright. Good job, Tess. Let me have a look. Is it finished? Yeah, but you know got any water. Oh, you've got to put some water on it too? Hi everyone. So it's um, it's midnight here. Um, beautiful, beautiful night. The stars are so clear out. I don't say you can see millions and millions of stars. You can hear the insect there in the background. But rather than write, I wanted to tell this funny story. I feel a bit I feel a bit silly uh, telling it, but I'm going to tell it anyway. Um, those may be familiar with um, Datura, Jimson weed. Um, Devil's Trumpet and the Angel's Trumpet has that long flower, long white flower or long purple flower. Well, I had both in my collection, both the Devil's Trumpet and the Angel's Trumpet. And um, Damo's mother, uh, her family, they're aware of this plant. And in the village, they're aware of it uh, as a shamanic plant. And they said uh, they don't like it to be around here because if a kid eats the leaf or uh, smells the flower, it can send them crazy, so it induces psychosis. Uh, and so I said, you know, fair enough, that's that's no problem, we'll get rid of the devil's uh, trumpet and the angel's trumpet. And so <clears throat> my bright idea to get rid of it was to hack it off at the stem and then put it in, in bags and then we'll be rid of it. So that's what I did about nine hours ago, maybe a little bit longer. Um, got my gloves on to be safe, um, got, got my machete and I cut both my devil's trumpet and my angel's trumpet. Stupid me, the stem obviously broke with the liquid inside which has uh, scolopamine and, uh, and a couple of other kind of dangerous alkaloids um, and the smell hit me in the face. Uh, whoa! And straight away I felt it. Um, now the effects of the Torah last for three days, up to three days. And so my heart's beating. I put the bag on, on the on the plants to cover them up. I'm telling Dam, oh my God, I'm gonna have a Datora trip because this thing is the real deal. You know, you don't mess with the Torah. It's, um, it's something that I have just because I, I love shamanic plants. I don't have it to use it or anything like that. So my heart's beating, colours are starting to blur, and I'm like, oh no, I've read so many reports of Datora. Um, you know, people report uh, seeing shadow people, uh, seeing demons, thinking that they're in different places to, to where they actually are, talking to furniture, uh, you know, 
blacking out and waking up in blood uh, or being rushed to the hospital. It's a complete delirium. So it's saying you're delirious, like you don't actually know what you're doing. Um, and so I said to Demo, well, you're gonna have to just watch me in case, you know, the worst, and you're gonna have to make sure I don't do anything stupid. So we waited nervously and anxiously for about three or four hours, and I'm reading reports online of all these things that, that Dottora has done uh, to people. Uh, it's used in the Amazon quite a lot. Sometimes they give Dottora to people and then they rob them because these people don't know what's going on. Um, of course, it's used shamanically as well, but only by highly skilled shamans with experience, generational experience with the plant. Um, so anyway, I'm thinking, this is it, I'm gonna go crazy. I'm not gonna know what's going on. I'm gonna start talking to myself. Uh, luckily, all of that didn't come to pass. Uh, I just felt quite tired. Um, I said, I'm going to bed. Uh, Damo took me to bed and uh, I just had a sleep. And in the dream, very vivid dreams, a um, little bit like blue lotus when you drink blue lotus tea, which uh, I also have, you know, here, I keep a collection just about everything. But uh, very vivid dreams, even more so than the Egyptian blue lotus. Um, I dreamt that I was planting the Datora again and again and again and again and again, over and over again. I would plant it, it would grow, I'd show it to Damo, and then I'd plant it and grow and show it to Damo. And um, I think I didn't do good for the spirit of the plant to hack it like that. Um, you can't burn it though, because the smoke will come up and it's very dangerous. Uh, it will intoxicate you. It's very hard to get rid of. In the village here, they say they bury them very deep in the ground. But silly me, I uh, feel a bit embarrassed telling the story. So, I, I, but I, what I do feel is, I feel a deep sense of presence at the moment, a deep sense of peace. I can hear every little insect uh, out here tonight. And I can also see all the stars. I was just looking up at the stars and everything's just so crystal clear. It almost feels like, you know, after you've had a really bad cold um, and you've been a bit ill and then you feel really clear headed afterwards. I don't know if you've ever experienced that. Or you've had something like antihistamine, like Benadryl. And I think it's got similar, uh, similar chemicals in it. I just feel kind of refreshed and like really present and very silent in the mind. Um, there's no internal uh, talk. So actually I'd say it's been a positive, positive thing, as stupid as I, as I was. And, um, and now I can say that I've had a little taste of the Torah. I've never considered doing it. I've never been interested because I know the reports, even from um, Terence McKenna. Terence McKenna, when he did the Torah, said that he, would, he was waiting for the onset, waiting for the onset, and nothing was happening. And then like an angel would fly in and drop newspapers on his lap. And uh, the newspapers would just keep dropping and dropping and dropping. And then he'd go back to waiting and waiting and waiting and saying, when's this thing gonna start? You know, you, you end up lost in cycles of, of time and obviously it lasts for three days. Some people, there's been reports of it lasting for weeks and months, the, the um, effects of it. Um, huge pupil dilation you get, um, used by sorcerers and witches and it's a very, very special plant. It's why I wanted it in the garden, but if the kids were to smell the flower or to eat the flower by accident, obviously that would be a problem. So that's my story. I uh, hope you've enjoyed it. Hope everybody's well and uh, happy new year, everyone. So at the petrol stations in Thailand, um, people do it for you. You don't get out and do your own car. People do it for you. Uh, they fill up the tank for you. And uh, every time I come, I always think, what a terrible job this must be because you're breathing in the petrol fumes the whole time and you're standing in the hot sun and they're often like got full face coverings and whatnot. So it's a tough job for them. It's a tough gig. So if you are in Thailand, uh, just for an example here, I just got a full tank and uh, I always give 20 bar per person that I see helping. So in this case, there was two people helping. So I give a 20 bar tip 
uh, so 40 baht for each of them, no matter what the petrol costs. And uh, if you are in Thailand and you're getting petrol, really think about doing that because they get paid nothing. And uh, just as I gave it to them, it's only 20 baht, I mean, it's nothing. Um, uh, as I gave it to them, I saw in my wing mirror that they high-fived each other and they were like really happy to get, I mean, they're probably students working here uh, part-time. Um, it's a tough gig, it's a hard gig. So I wish I'd give more now, but you don't want to. I, I, I come here quite often, so I come here at least once a week, so you can give more. But um, if you are in Thailand, make sure you do tip your petrol people because it's a tough job and clearly they really appreciate it, even if it's just 20 baht. I mean, they were dancing up and down and high fiving about it. So uh, just a top tip for living in Thailand or if you're here just on holiday, uh, whatnot, uh, tip the petrol people. We just heard a loud bang from behind the house. And uh, the first thing Indy did, she ran up to Tiss and guarded him. Isn't it amazing how dogs, um, they take care of children. Like they understand that the children are important. They're always watchful of the children. Uh, and it really is wonderful to have these dogs. She's always walking by him and protecting him and looking after him. Uh, any little bang, she makes, she runs straight to him and protects him. Doesn't she? Indy yeah. takes care of you. Yeah. So I wanted to talk about some of my deeper thoughts of late and uh, a lot of them are regarding temptation. I was listening to Alan Watts recently and uh, he has a great message where he says, it's terribly important if you want to outwit the devil because you don't let him, you don't let him know. I uh, don't let the devil know your plans to do so. Because if he knows, he'll present you with lots of, I'm paraphrasing here, uh, many temptations that will get in your way. And, um, because he says, after all, who do you think the devil is? And uh, some people will understand that question and know the answer to it. Um, but some might think that when you kind of drop out of society and you live in a bamboo hut, that uh, you no longer have any challenges in life, that there are no challenges and there are no uh, temptations. And there are. Uh, the challenges don't go away. Um, they're still there, but your, your environment has changed. The challenges still remain. Uh, and temptations for me, like uh, every other human, uh, everybody's human, uh, temptations to, you know, have a, Le have a Leo. Oh, just have one can of Leo. Just have a drink. Um, is, is a thought that used to cross my mind more in the past, not so much these days. And there are many temptations, of course. You'll have yours and I have others too. I, for me, it's, it's about becoming satisfied or staying satisfied or thankful for what I already have and not complaining. And there's no complaining about anything. It's just acceptance of, hmm, this is definitely enough as it is um, every time. And so the temptation and challenges still come, of course, but it's being able to watch those and kind of laugh at them um, and know where they, where they lead, where they lead those, those temptations, the temptations of the devil, as it were. Um, that's something that's been on my mind. In, in the new years. I'm somebody that is, is kind of working with my own addictions and that's a big part of addiction. We get temptation, the temptation, the devil within. What is it, Tess? What is it?
What what dinosaur is this, Tess? It's yeah. And what's your favourite dinosaur? No, what, what other dinosaurs are there? T-Rex and Tritops. Triceratops and Lion. And Stegosaurus. Stegosaurus. Long neck. So hi everyone, um, this is actually the next day, so it's it's about 48 hours later and I thought I need to add to this story because I guess this is a rare happening, not many people actually do this and can report about it and um, you know poison themselves, nearly, nearly kill themselves. Um, so I thought I would just finish this story for anybody that is, is interested on the effects of this devil's trumpet. Last night I went to sleep. And what I'm going to say now is completely true. It might sound very strange, but it's completely true. Last night I went to sleep and I fell into a really deep sleep. Um, and then I lived somebody else's life what, for what seemed like weeks and months. A guy that lives in Nepal, running around Nepal, um, I think being chased by some police or something. Uh, I know it sounds strange. But I lived this guy's life and it was only after weeks and months of living this, this person's life that I thought, hold on a sec, this isn't my life. There's something wrong here. And um, from that point I was like, well, I must be asleep. So I tried and tried and tried to wake myself up, but I was just in this person's life. Uh, eventually I shook myself awake and uh, it was really scary actually. I've never had uh, any kind of dream uh, like that before. And I had heard that Dottora has this effect uh, with dreams. Um, now, it's the second night now, and I've just kind of dozed off and gone to sleep, and having the, you know, the same the same dream, super vivid, super lucid, I can move it around anywhere where I want, and um, and yeah, I mean, it's very, very intense, so they say this stuff lasts for three days, and I'm going to see if I'm hoping that on the fourth day I can just have a normal sleep because <laughs> it's it's like dropping into Inception or something. If you've seen the movie Inception, a dream within a dream. Um, so yeah, this might sound come across a bit crazy or nutty, but I thought I thought I will honestly and authentically report what has happened with this um, devil's trumpet. Um, do not recommend it because I didn't even have a dose. Don't recommend it to to anybody. Stay far away from it and don't smell it. Um, it's, a, it's a crazy thing. I'm hoping to get my sleep back. Uh, although it has been interesting. It's been an interesting journey. Um, very insightful. <laughs>